ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Now, I'm going to get right into it. Thank you for being here. I'm going to get right into it. And what I'm going to talk about is the way I see this disaster playing out. And, I mean, things might change. It's a very, very changeable situation, but this is what I see coming. And, uh, anyway, what's hap we see what's happening right now with the Fed with all this printing and everything, you know, and, and uh, we see the economy itself is, is not springing back to life. That's because, you know, we got deflation on one side and the Fed, the Fed's holding back a little bit right now. Now, here's the thing. Going into this winter, the next few months leading into winter, and, and probably around, it's not going to be a very Merry Christmas this year. <laughs> I don't think. I think we're going to be muddling our way through this virus and also the money not making it into the general economy. More jobs being lost, possible civil unrest this winter, uh, a lot of trouble coming up this winter. You know, we might even have uh, uh, power outages in places. We might have big storms. You know, it's going to be a really nasty winter. But I'll tell you what I think the overall. I think we're going to muddle through it. I think the world economy is going to muddle through it. I think there's enough deflation out there that's going to keep us from going into hyperinflation during the course of the winter, and I think we're going to muddle through it. But, you know, I'm going to tell you about the big disaster that's coming. Now, this, this virus was a disaster, you know. Uh, but I think come sometime next spring, maybe around March, I think we're going to see the two things start to push the virus back. And... Then, at around that same time frame, I think that this, these new digital currencies by the central banks are going to start to come out. And, you know, this is altogether different. We've never seen anything like these digital currencies before. The central bank's going to release through the Banking for All Act, more than likely the Banking for All Act. Uh, we've never seen anything like this before, and lowering interest rates down near zero. These new central bank digital currencies are going to pump money directly into the system, to the consumer. And this is going to, along with the, the virus starting to leave, and there's multiple reasons why the virus is probably going to start to leave in the spring. Uh, one is just the fact that a lot of people have had it already. And the other is they're probably going to have a mass vaccinations happening around the world. I know as soon as I say the word vaccination, an awful lot of people out there in my audience cringe. They just cringe. But this is probably what's going to happen. That being said, I think we're in for an economic recovery sometime next summer. Not a full, all-out, full-blast economic recovery, but an economic recovery not, nonetheless. But it's going to come at the cost of the fiat currencies. This is when we're really going to see the alternatives to the dollar, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, uh, gold, silver, basically go to infinity. But it's also, I believe, the following winter going to cause the biggest crisis of all by the following winter. Because the economic recovery, I believe, is not going to last very long. It's, it's going to basically be a... A recovery caused by the stimulus that's coming in the form of a, of a digital bank digital currency. And it's going to make the dollar all, and all of the other fiat currencies, their value is going to just absolutely plummet. Now, I'll explain to you why the value is going to plummet on these things. Imagine, if you will... All these people who've lost their jobs, now the Fed can send them money directly. They'll have an account with the Fed. And the Fed just pushes a button and they have dollars in their wallet, their digital, new digital wallet that they can go out and spend. Uh, is it any wonder that that's going to cause a recovery? But it's also because nobody's worked for this money. This is basically like free money. And they're purchasing things that people put labor into producing. 
that means that the prices of all of these items that you buy are going to go up exceedingly fast. And what that's going to do is it's going to trigger a secondary effect, which is the people, the general population, everyone, including investors, everyone is going to start to lose confidence in the purchasing power of the fiat currencies that are now in digital form. So basically, it's going to start the process of the fiat currencies dying. So their competition with the digital uh, decentralized uh, blockchain technology, uh, I'm not going to say digital currency because they're not currency, they're money. They're going to be in direct competition with that. And that's going to be going up in value. Your Bitcoin is going to be soaring in value, along with all of your other digital currencies. Now, the big crisis. Where the big crisis comes in is when this effect becomes absolutely profound. To where you can't buy Bitcoin anymore in dollar terms. Because the dollar is going down so fast nobody wants to trade it off. There's only 21 million Bitcoin or never will be anymore. And uh, even gold and silver, you won't be able to buy it. It's just your di your di new digital dollars is is everything you buy. You'll go to the grocery store, and it'll it'll require more and more of these, like a piece of meat. You'll be think you're looking at a piece of gold. The price is going to go up that exorbitantly high if you if you're buying it in digital, and and this is also going to drag the value of the non digital. Because they're probably going to still be cash around in the system. This will drag the value of that cash down. And and ultimately, they'll probably want to get rid of it, the cash. They'll probably want you to transform it into the new digital. You know, in fact, at a certain point when they feel fairly confident and they've been using this digital for a while, then they'll say, hey, you know what, you've got so many days now, or 90 days or whatever, to transform your cash into this new digital currency. It's not going to last, guys. Just like just like below zero interest rates are not going to last. This is non-sustainable. The new digital currency is non-sustainable. Taking and giving free money to everybody in America on a digital wallet is, is going to destroy the dollar. It's going to destroy the purchasing power of these digital currencies. This is the crisis. The hyperinflation that ensues while these digital currencies become very rapidly become worthless means that everything is still going to exist out there. If a guy owns a car, the car's still there, even though his digital wallet's not, digital money's not worth very much. At a certain point when it's inflating really fast, how do you price anything in dollars anymore? You can't say, well, my house is worth $200,000. Because tomorrow it'll be worth $400,000. And the day after that it'll be worth $600,000. The dollar becomes an unstable way to measure value of anything. And so what happens is a wealth transfer occurs. That wealth transfer is all of the money, or the value, not the money, but the value that's stored in everything you have that you count in dollars. I mean, it's very common. Everybody says, well, you know, they might take you into their workshop and, say, and show you a, a brand new drill press. And he might say, it's worth $1,000 or $2,000, you know? Everything's priced in dollars. What happens when the dollar becomes so unstable you can't price anything in dollars and you convert all of that value over into some other asset class? Because you have to. You have to have something that people use as a mean of, means of exchange and a means to store value. We've always had that all the way through history. It's, through history, it's always been gold and silver. But now we're moving into a strange time where we got cryptocurrencies. You know, and the cryptocurrencies, <laughs> they, they have this new technology, guys. I'm telling you, the cryptocurrencies is so far ahead of gold and silver. I know the gold and silver people don't like to hear me say that. But, I mean, okay, say you got two ounces of gold and you want to, and, and this happens and the world's in crisis and you got to, for some reason, you got to get out of Dodge. 
okay, you're not going to get past the border with that two ounces of gold. They're going to steal it from you. In fact, they're probably going to put you in jail and steal it from you. They're probably going to do a full body and cavity search examination and put you in jail and steal it from you. It's not even worth trying. You know, they're going to be so hungry for gold in the end, they're going to be taking it and they're going to be poaching people's rings and stuff. That's my wedding ring! And they're pulling it off of her finger. And then putting her in jail after. <laughs> I mean, how far do you, how far are these people willing to go when they become that greedy in the end? Because their system is collapsing. The only solution they have to all of this is tax the taxpayer even higher because we're going to have to pay for it all, ultimately. And, I mean, you know, they're just going to raise taxes on the people that are working and they're going to give it to the people who aren't working. That's no plan, you know, and this whole thing is starting to crumble. It's starting to fall apart, and it's starting to fall apart very rapidly. And I'm trying to get, figure exactly what's going to happen in all this. And I've been working on this in my mind for weeks. As this situation starts to deteriorate, I can see it a little bit clearer. You know, it's like looking through a foggy glass, you know, and you're trying to make out figures on the other side of that foggy glass. And as you see things coming into place, like you see them arranging to make these new digital dollars and all the Fed Fed banks here, there, and everywhere are talking about how this new digital currency, how it's coming in, then you can figure out exactly what's going to happen. It's going to stimulate an economic recovery because it's money that's going to be pumped directly into the part of the economy that's suffering right now. But they're not going to have it here until next year. So what's going to happen between now and winter time is we're going to go through a, like, it's like a depression. That's what's it's right now. It's happening right now. It's right in front of everybody right now. We're going to go through that all winter, through the elections and into next year. And then, boom, surprise, surprise. Everybody who signs up for a digital wallet can have one, and we're going to give you X amount every month, 2000 a month or whatever. Of course, everybody's going to sign up for it. And watch what happens when, they, when, you see that, when you see that money hit the fan. Every single person in America getting $2,000 a month. What do you think is going to happen? The stores are going to start filling up with people. There's not going to be enough products to sell them. And they never worked for it. They're just getting money from heaven. Now, of course, the merchants out there, they're going to just love this. You know, uh, oh, oh, all those shopping bags we had, they all sold out today. Okay, we got a new order coming in. Okay, yeah, mark them up 50% higher. That's our economic recovery. Okay? Ain't going to last long, guys, before we go right into hyperinflation. So I figured an economic recovery would be under full swing by midsummer. Bitcoin will be going to the moon. Gold will be going to the moon. But if you're smart, you won't even sell it. And 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 uh, the dollar will be going down the hill faster and faster into the next winter. And next winter is going to be the big disaster because the dollar is going to start to go down so fast. And all the other fiat currencies with them. Because all these banks are going to copy one another. Once the United States and the Bank of China get their new digital currencies going, you watch the euro follow. Watch all, and then the smaller countries will start all following very quickly thereafter. And so by sometime next summer or late fall, we're going to have all the countries on earth pumping out these digital currencies to the people. And of course it's going to feel good because all of a sudden you got a bunch of money in your new digital wallet. Head out and spend it. Everybody's going to be doing the same thing. They're going to be paying off bills that they had. And they're going to be buying new things, things that they put off buying for a long time and everything. I'm telling you, this is going to create such a disaster. Because as these fiat currencies become worthless, there's going to be a mad dash out of them into some assets of value. And that disruption is going to be on such a massive scale by probably not this winter, but the following winter, that it's, it's very likely 
the system's going to not be able to take the strain of it all, and the system's going to crack. So you say, well, what then? What happens when the system cracks? When the system cracks, the system freezes. And then they have to, they have to actually transfer over into a hard money system. And that transfer over could take months, even if it's done quickly. And during that period in time, everything's frozen. So it's not, I'm not expecting it really this winter. I'm expecting hardship this winter. You want to have supplies put away for this winter. You want to have <coughs> things like canned food and bottled water and a way to make heat for yourself and everything, you know, put away this winter. But this winter, I don't think, is going to be the real bad one. The real bad one's coming the following winter. After an economic recovery ends into a hyperinflation. And then a reset. The reset's going to come at the end of the hyperinflation. And that reset's going to be the big disaster. Where everything just basically locks up and freezes in the whole world. And if you can imagine what that's like, especially if it happens in the wintertime, it's sort of like a disaster that occurred aboard a ship years ago uh, that, uh, that, that an American tragedy no one remembers. The fate of the, US, of the SS Eastland and the hundreds of people who lost their lives that day in 1915 has fallen out of our collective consciousness. That's odd considering it's one of the worst maritime disasters in U.S. history. Basically what happened was, is there was a ship... A big ship, really big ship, you know, and uh, it was a long skinny vessel, it was very tall, and like 2,500 or 3,000 people all got on board, they're going to take the trip, and pu pu lifted the gangplank, and the ship started to lift list on the side, and the ship fell over on its side, because all the weight on the top decks, nobody saw it coming, the ship started to list a little bit, started to tip sideways a little bit, and a lot of people got off because they realized, hey, you know, this ship is, is going to fall over and sink. But an awful lot of people on board had this feeling like, no, that could never happen. Come on, there's, there's captains and everything. They would know, you know, we're safe up here. Boom. Boom. You know, and that's what I'm telling you. The economy right now is starting to list. They're going to write it again with these new digital currencies. They're going to write the economy up and they're going to buoy it. And it's going to be, and that's when she's really going to sink though, after that, because that, that's the, the, this is the Titanic and she's going down guys. It's going to take a bit longer, you know, but I, I, I think it's going to take, I, I think it's going to take almost a full year before we finally get to the real end part of this game. And it's going to be a, a disaster unparalleled in human history when the hyperinflation really takes hold worldwide. See, we've had hyperinflations, and we'll have them in one country, and they'll run over to the next country's currency and use it. But this, what currency do you use when it's a whole world that's hyperinflating? What currency do you use? Gold and silver is not a currency. But there are currencies out there. Guys, put on your little thinking cap right now. They're right there, and they're obscure right now. And why they're obscure is is because there's no need case for them, really, you know, because we have fiat. Why are you going to abuse Bitcoin if we got fiat? But what if you don't have fiat? What if fiat what has been so mismanaged for so long that it goes down in a big ball of flames? What then? world has to make purchases. They have to make, well, we got a whole list. About 400 different coins there. Bitcoin all the way down the list. And, and any one of them can carry endless transactions. We got all these coins and they're ready. They're ready. They're ready to catch all of this liquidity and all of this value of the whole world. They're ready to catch it all. What if? What if that's what they do? in a very quick fashion at a certain point. Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. We'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.